State Senator Royce West said he has he is not yet ready to endorse MJ Hagar. Hagar defeated West last week in the primary runoff for U.S. Senate. West told us he first wants to discuss some issues in private with her. West would not say, though, what divides them. But if MJ Hagar is to have a chance against John Cornyn, she needs Royce West's supporters. Hagar has to at least try to unite the party behind her, and she doesn't have much time either. The November election is a little more than 100 days away. We spoke to Hagar fresh off her victory as the Democratic nominee for U.S. Senate. MJ, congratulations on the win. Uh, let's begin with November. John Cornyn, $14 million in the bank. I think you have $1.6 million is the latest I read. How much money is it going to take to defeat Cornyn in November? You know, um, he's got definitely well-funded allies that have a very profit-driven reason to keep him in, in a position to keep legislating for their profit margins. Um, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, we're going to raise the resources. We have we have built a grassroots army. We've raised millions of dollars with an average online donation of $23. Um, so our fundraising looks very different from his. But we are going to raise the resources that it's going to take to not only win our race, but run a good, strong, coordinated campaign that's going to deliver good results up and down the ballot. Um, but really, it's the people of Texas who uh, doesn't take really that much money at all to show them how John Cornyn is failing them. Um, and they're going to stand up and make sure that our voices are heard in November. Do, do you have a figure you think it might take to at least get on TV in the major markets in the state? Um, no, I, I really think that, that um, more and more people are better informed. Um, more and more people are pulling information instead of having to have that information pushed at them. We need to raise millions of dollars, don't get me wrong. Um, but we've already shown that we're going to be able to do that. Uh, we're going to continue being a strong fundraising team. Um, and, you know, I think that uh, John Cornyn advertises really well for our race when he opens his mouth or tweets on social media or tells people that he doesn't think kids can get COVID. Um, you know, so he's helping us a lot. Let's talk about the uh, most recent polling we have seen. The Dallas Morning News and UT Tyler did a poll. And in the poll, it still had Cornyn at uh, 37%. I think you at 26%. He's still 11 points ahead of you. Where do you see a path to victory right now since we're 100 days out? Yeah, that was really before we even started going up statewide with, with some of the messaging that we've been putting out. Um, I think that those numbers are really alarming for him, and we see it in his reactions now. Uh, for a three-term incumbent state uh, or incumbent senator, for, for him to have a 36% approval rating and for him to have such a low um, you know, poll himself at me being a, a newcomer and relatively unknown. I should not be within 11. And we've seen a lot closer polling, by the way, also as well. Um, so we're well, very confident. We knew that this was going to, to take a lot of work. And we're actually ahead uh, in, you know, from where we thought we would be. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about, too. Give us an idea of what your internal polling shows since that was dated. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not just internal polling. I mean, I've seen uh, public polling that shows us within seven. Um, that's exciting, especially since we really just got started against him. Um, he's already been spending a lot of money meddling in our, our primary, even that shows that his numbers show the same thing. Uh, you know, that's encouraging when you see that um, our numbers probably say the same thing as his because he's already, you know, spending so much money meddling in our primary. He's been in politics for nearly four decades and he's never, to my knowledge, ever had to meddle in his opponent's primary before. So he knows he's under threat. Well, let's talk about the primary for a moment, the primary runoff. Uh, you clearly had the most votes on Super Tuesday. You were on TV in, in the major markets. Royce West had really hardly any money. Why do you think he ended up with 47% of the vote in the primary runoff in a, Ju a July runoff? You know, he had a lot of infrastructural Democratic support across the state from legislators that he's worked with. Um, and John Cornyn was spending a lot of money on his behalf also, advertising that, you know, his endorsements from um, really amazing leaders like Sheila Jackson Lee. Um, so I I'm just really pleased, not only with the um, over 40,000 votes that we're leading by right now, but I'm very pleased if you look at the map of the counties that we won, they are just corner to corner across the state. And, and that is more important. I think that's really reflective of um, our performance coming up in the general to be able to turn out um, communities that have not been you know engaged in the past uh, we drove tens of thousands of miles around the state before um, the primary and before covid kind of kicked in and and you see the results of that uh, investment in in grassroots groups but also in in communities and talking to people outside of the political echo chamber yeah, and the final vote count we've seen so far shows you with a 40,000 vote lead, clearly a, a win there. But I'm curious, are you going to reach out to Royce West and ask for his endorsement? 
Oh, I mean, we're constantly working to to get great people elected up and down the ballot. Um, backstage of of several events, Royce and I always talked about the need to come together after the the primary and after the runoff. Um, so I'm very confident that we're going to do that because there is too much on the line. This isn't personal. Uh, we got to get kids out of cages. We got to get um, Texans access to health care. Um, this is a very important election. There's a lot riding on this, and we have an opportunity to uh, send home a DC politician and deliver an ass kicking combat vet. Um, and, and so I, I know that we're going to do what it takes to get it done. Well, you said this isn't personal. Uh, Royce West told us that, that he wants to sit down and talk to you first about this. Do you regret the, the primary runoff being so contentious? We kept things really positive. Um, you know, you have to show people that you're going to defend yourself and stand up for yourself. But um, we've been focused on the general the the whole time uh, for the last year and a half. In fact, it, it really um, was something that a lot of the other people in the primary kept commenting on, that their frustration that I was so focused on the general. I think that that's important. I think that I have to set an example um, on how we should be running races in the future and how we should be um, focusing primaries on policy and on uh, differences in policy or make your best case to take on the incumbent and let the voters decide. Um, so I, I'm really not worried because when we were out on the road talking to folks, um, they know that too much is on the line. That's why you're seeing a surge in record-breaking turnout amidst a global pandemic. I mean, you know, there's a lot for John Cornyn to be worried about in the numbers, um, and it's the, the, the same things that have us so optimistic. All right. MJ Hagar, congratulations again on the uh, primary runoff win. Thanks so much. Take care, Jason.